board members okay with it? Go ahead and call our July board meeting um, to order. And our first order of business is to approve the minutes from our last meeting. So um, do I have, I hope everybody's had a chance to look over your minutes. Um, do I have a motion that we approve the minutes from our last meeting? So moved. So moved. And a second? Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Okay, and the approval of the agenda. Dr. Howard, do we have any changes at this time? There are no um, changes to the actual agenda, but I'd like to ask Dr. Blankenship if she could, um, you all were emailed a personnel list, recommendation list that we will publish um, tomorrow as we always do. But I think she had a couple of additions that she wanted to speak to you about. Okay. Yes, ma'am, thank you. Um, as you know, this is a, a busy time and uh, things are ever changing. And uh, we have uh, three uh, return to work retirees who serve as, as uh, coaches um, at East Jackson High School and uh, as well as teachers. And typically they serve in a full-time role during the month of August to help get school started and um, complete some of their their duties and so we would like to ask your permission to add them to the personnel list for um for this month for approval for return to work uh, um in in august at a different percentage of time and that would be uh tommy satone and roger edmonds going from 49 percent to a hundred percent for the month of august and then Michael Conley going from 49% to 75% for the month of August. And this is just for the month of August for these? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And we have done this um, for several years. It, it provides some additional support for, um, for the school as well as uh, those gentlemen with their coaching duties, so. Okay. All right. Those are the only changes, Ms. Wheeler, if the board is willing to um, support that addition. Okay. All right. Well, hearing those um, changes, do I have a motion that we approve our agenda for tonight? So moved. All right. In a second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Uh, all right. Very good. Okay. Um, I don't know that we have anyone in the public for comments tonight, Dr. Howard. Uh, no, not that I'm aware of. Uh, we do have a couple of visitors who joined us through Google Meet. Uh, I just want to make the board aware, since we didn't get to go to GSBA this um, summer, uh, there were some legislative updates. And one of those legislative updates is that we're um, required to put public comment on our agenda every month. Um, and, and so we, we will start adding that as, a, as an additional item each month. So don't know that we have anyone out there who's, re uh, no one called ahead to request public comment. But at this time, if there's anyone who has a public comment, I would ask that um, they speak forth at this time. So with none being heard, Ms. Wheeler, I think that is all for a public comment. Okay, all right. And we'll turn it over to you, Dr. Howard, for superintendent's comments. Okay, thank you very much. I want to thank the board for their time on Thursday. We had a, a, a very productive meeting and it was informative and helpful. Um, I want to start with uh, two, two celebrations. The first one I'd like to share with you a little bit. Um, last month, we took some time to highlight our school nutrition department, um, and that was our you know, really our Excellence in Service Award. And I want to send a shout out to our teaching and learning department, who um, is primarily district leaders, but I think equivalently out there to our, our teachers who responded so appropriately to a very difficult situation. So um, I'm simply going to do this, but I'm going to ask Todd to, to pipe in at any given time. 
Uh, I'm recognizing Todd and his leadership and his team. So uh, he really shouldn't have to join in, but he certainly has an amazing team. I, I just want you to be aware of the numbers of things that our teaching and learning team had to quickly pivot on. Um, certainly, as you know, remote learning came at us very quickly. Um, they've worked d diligently to develop a distance learning plan. They are building out Canvas. They have worked diligently on our student advocacy plans, communication plans, as well as our secondary instructional cycle. So uh, just want to highlight some of the work that they've done. Here's just a few pictures. And as you know, we were sitting in a principal's meeting on March the 12th. And we heard some coverage and then we get a conference call with the governor. And within, within a few minutes, we have to quickly make arrangements to not be in school for a few weeks. And then of course, as we know, that extended all the way through the rest of the year and they have responded um, amazingly. And so have our school leaders and, and our, our teachers. As you can see, there are just a few um, pictures there of, of what it looked like from a perspective of a, of a student as, uh, as well as the teachers and families. And we know our families had to pivot as well. Just a little bit of data for you when people ask you. I know when we talked about starting uh, school in a remote learning format, it wasn't real popular. And I understand families are ready to get back face to face. But um, in a very short time, our technology team and the folks in teaching and learning distributed over 4,500 uh, 4, Chromebooks. Uh, and those were individually um, in, individually seen. There's no pictures. No, you should have interrupted me. So the gentlemen tell me that you're not seeing this PowerPoint. So I'm going to make sure that I can can share show it with you. Sure. Share your desktop. So when you do a share your screen again, you yes. have to share uh, share and then do the entire desktop. Entire story. Oh, so I asked y'all if you were seeing me. I thought you were seeing me. Well, um, we saw it. We saw the agenda. <laughs> tabs. We didn't see gotcha. Okay. So with that being said, I'm gonna pick up. We we did a dry run, and I thought we were good, but we'll we'll pick up where we are. So um, hopefully you're seeing this now. Are you seeing it? I'm not. <laughs> yeah. No, we we just see you, Dr. Howard. Oh, that's terrible. <clears throat> no, that's not terrible. Well, hey, Don. All right, so let's pick up from there. We went from Zoom to Google because Zoom limited to 100 people. So now we can do 250 with Google Meets, but um, different approach to the platform. So I apologize. But again, our technology team distributed 4,500 Chromebooks very quickly. You can see there um, interactive online tools by the number, uh, over a million Canvas interactions, 467,000 Google Meets, Flipgrid, Google searches. And you can see there that our teachers and our students were highly engaged in all of that in a very, very quick turnaround time. So a shout out for the quick pivot that they did with teaching and learning. And since then, they have continued to build out remarkable experiences so that we're going to be able to offer um, a, a, a pretty robust um, distance learning format for families who choose for their children to learn from home as we start school back. So that's a, a lot of a lot of work has gone into that. Canvas is our learning management platform that they have uh, been working to develop. And I would say that uh, the pandemic has created somewhat of a, a catalyst for us to work on this at record speed. And so, Todd, I don't know if you want to speak to any of this, but at this time, uh, 436 courses have been built out. That's a lot of work. <laughs> Our student advocacy plan continues to be in, developed, but has made tremendous progress. We're excited. The last week of July, we'll be training any schools who have not been trained on seven mindsets. And then we also have teams that have worked on a robust professional and life skills scope and sequence. And if real, you will remember from our parents and our parent advisory council, this is a really, really important part of um, the improvement process that our parents really value. So we're excited to be able to have that. And then we're also work have worked diligently on improving the advisement process. So they, they're going to have that ready to roll at, at each of our middle and high schools. 
And then, as you know, with the transition, we've had to absorb some of the responsibilities with communications. And our teaching and learning team has taken this to a new level. And we've developed a communication matrix and we'll be implementing Remind. So we're very, very confident in the next steps with our communications. And so I just wanted you to be aware of the work that has happened and how much has gone into this. Um, we've got the secondary instructional cycle, and that's to support our high schools who are evolving from a seven-period day to a AV block, and that starts this year. So you can see there that um, uh, Mr. Nicholson and his team, Jeremy Peacock, Katie Warwick, and, and many others have worked hard to help this become more of a, uh, more of a learning cycle, uh, less based on time and more based on learning being the constant and time being the variable. So we're excited about that. And then I think it's really important that we just recognize the fact that our um, our teachers and students are amazing, even through the day to day unpredictability of of life. Basically, every time we asked our teachers and our leaders stepped up. And I think it's worth just reflecting on the fact that even through the difficult times, we had teachers and volunteers delivering graduation signs and doing all kinds of things to make sure that we remember what was most important. And that was the students out there in our community. So just wanted to highlight um, the work of our teachers and, of course, our teaching and learning team. And Todd and your team, thank you very much for the amazing work that has happened. Thank you, Dr. Howard. And, and we're just incredibly grateful to to have the support of the board. And, and honestly, in Jackson County, I feel like everything is a collaboration and, and we have surrounded ourselves with people who are experts, whether they're in the classroom, or their district office or, or leading a school. And so. Um, while while we appreciate this recognition, really, it's it's a recognition of the culture and climate of Jackson County, where we are able to to have such level of collaboration. So uh, thank you, and and we will continue to do the best work that we can possibly do, which I I'm pretty proud to say is pretty phenomenal because of our teachers and leaders. So thank you for the recognition. Absolutely. All right. The next item on the agenda is, is one that I just think is worth um, just highlighting. And I'm going to make sure before I continue, they can see that. Did it come up? Yes, we can see it. <laughs> um, this, this happened during a, a almost like right as we were going into a holiday. Uh, those of us who have been a part of Jackson County Schools for years and some who have only been here for a few years know what an impact uh, Miss Margaret Ward has had, had on Jackson County Schools. And she was a, a member of the Nicholson community, but probably one of the greatest pillars in our in all of Jackson County. And so I just felt like um, on behalf of Jackson County Schools that we should take a minute to to recognize the amazing service and the amazing life that she led and um, just keep her in her spirit alive. If you want to talk about a, a true servant's spirit, that was Miss Margaret Ward. So I don't know if any of our board members would like to make a comment, but I, I will say that Miss Ward was one of the very, and, and, and Miss Wheeler, you're one as well, but there's not a lot of folks who have had the privilege of serving as a board member and an employee. And so Miss Ward served on the Jackson County Board of Education early on, but then she also yeah. served the school district for almost 40 years. So yeah. um, yeah. A, a very special highlight to her and her family. Yeah, she was the she was the first female board member for Jackson County Schools, <clears throat> and um, and then she she absolutely loved Jackson County, she um, loved the community, and um, she she dedicated her life to students. She really, really did. She so. absolutely. I, we, we will miss her. We will miss her and, and her, her um, spirit. So, but she has a great legacy. We were blessed to have her, know her. Absolutely. Yep. We will uh, we'll miss that hour phone call every year that you got from Margaret once a year to tell you thank you. And yeah. she appreciated the job you were doing. And, yeah. uh, and then she went in on to tell you what was wrong and what needed to be fixed. <laughs> That's right. Last about an hour, but it was a good call. It was, yeah, yep. yeah, 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 yeah. She loved the kids. She really, really yep. did. And and I had said once she retired that I didn't know how she would how she would make it because uh, the schools were her life. You know, they really were. Yep. 
she is forever, she will forever be treasured. And I just want to take this opportunity. There is a Margaret Ward service uh, scholarship um, and yeah. there's donations available that's based at East Jackson High for an East Jackson High School student. And um, that's where she ended her career, but she was dedicated to all of Jackson County. And, and uh, we're just forever grateful. And I felt like it was definitely worth recognizing Miss Margaret Ward for her service to our school district. So thank you. Yes, yeah. I think that's very nice for you to do that too. Absolutely. Thank y'all. Yes, thank you, Dr. Howard. That was nice. Absolutely. She's well-deserving. I wish there was more that we could do, but um, she's honored for sure. The last comment that I have just briefly is to remind the board of what we discussed. And before we put this communication out, I'd like to just make sure that the board is in, in support of, of the direction that the the administration and district leaders are recommending. This is the communication that we'd like to put out tomorrow. Uh, you will notice on the action items that uh, the calendar is attached. That's a revised calendar, which delays the start until August the 12th, and it modifies our schedule throughout the year. This will give our teaching and learning and our teachers um, an opportunity to become very, very prepared uh, in case that we have to pivot once again to a remote learning, which means if for some reason our district or our state went back to a shelter in place, we would have to send everyone home and we would we would divert to a remote learning. But as you know, we also are offering families a choice so that they can select distance learning if they so choose, which means that they would then be a little bit more self-paced. Um, and there's some guidance in here for what that distance learning option would look like. So we are planning to ask our families to carefully consider if they plan to send their children back to school or if they would prefer to be in a distance learning format. And then we're going to use the responses. And I'm, I want to say a very special thank you again to Todd and Martha Wilson, who have made uh, arrangements for that to go out to parents through Infinite Campus so that we make sure every single parent has an opportunity to make a selection for their child um, or their children, depending on how many children. And they don't have to choose the same. It may be that they want one of their children to return because of their learning needs or or potential uh, challenges. And, and so we're asking each family to respond for all of their children. And I've also linked in there the reopening plan, which just gives a general overview of what we plan to do to mitigate and use precautions um, for the best of our ability. And just a small update from our meeting on Thursday, we have uh, investigated and are in the process of um, ordering masks. So we'll order Eagle and Panther masks for our students and our, and our teachers so that hopefully we can really encourage and promote the, the wearing of masks. Um, and it will be an expectation, certainly on our buses. That is the place that we know there's the greatest um, risk. Uh, but we, we hope that it will be um, a mutual respect and that by providing something that's spirit wear, that it will encourage our students to, to participate in that. So this is what we plan to send out with the board's blessing. And I just wanted to make sure that you are still in support of the direction that we are going. Well, uh, I am, and I hope, Don, did you have a comment or a question? No, thumbs up. Okay, good, good. Okay. All right, and everybody I'm else good. is good with this? I'm good. Yes. Okay. All right. Very good. Yes. All right. Very good. Well, um, as you know, we we took the feedback that we were that we got from a variety of uh, both our teachers and from our, our internal and st uh, external stakeholders. So we're we're very glad of that. And that's all the comments that I have. But I'm happy to speak about any of the uh, consent agenda items that you may have questions on. Do we have any questions on any of the items for the, the consent agenda tonight? No, I don't. No. OK. Um, all right, well, hearing none then, uh, by using a consent agenda for items one through 11, do I have a motion that we accept these? So moved. And a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, and we need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay, and a second? Second. Okay, very good. I'm sure we're all in favor. Thank you all, and I hope you'll all have a good evening and um, um, be safe. Yep. Enjoy yourself, Ted. <laughs> yeah. Have a good time for all of us.